record. All right. Well, let's go ahead and get started so we don't waste a lot of time. Let me ask the Father to watch over our time together. Father God, we thank you that we can join together. I just pray your, your blessing and your guidance and health and everything that's needed for my brothers and sisters here, Lord. I just pray that you will uh, watch over each of us and give us what we need to keep accomplishing your work in the various parts of the world where you've planted us. I do pray, Lord, that uh, Ryan will be able to join us soon and that he's not having any difficulties. I just pray that you will uh, keep the phone connections and the com computer uh, internet connections uh, going well. And please just, just watch over us uh, during this time. We just pray these things in your, in your name, Jesus. Amen. Amen. All right. Well, we are going to start talking about the, the literature review chapter. Uh, we've gotten through uh, the introduction chapter. Uh, I'm sure those, I've given you some more comments, and Dr. Henry has given you some comments on those of you who have been able to get that uh, in, you know, either weeks four and five, We're kind of refining that, that whole chapter now uh, over this time period. And um, yeah, I know it's it's difficult just to get all those pieces together in a in a timely way and in a way that reflects a uh, an excellent uh, process in, in in dissertation work. But uh, please just keep at it, and uh, Dr. Henry and I will keep giving you our comments. And hopefully, uh, by the time you get through this course, you will have a proposal that is going to. Uh, be excellent and will be able to uh, be presented to the academic cabinet and that you'll be able to uh, have that, that proposal approved. Uh, let me just ask one quick question. Uh, supervisors, are you finding a supervisor? You need to find a supervisor who can work with you uh, as you after you finish this course. We'll be able to look at your proposal and I recommend that you uh, look through the faculty list, the adjunct faculty and the faculty list for BGU. If you can find someone there, that's probably preferable because that person will be knowledgeable of the BGU uh, dissertation process. That doesn't mean you can't use someone else. If there's someone else that you really would like to uh, have work with you as a supervisor, dissertation supervisor, that will be fine. Uh, you'll just need to have a VITA sent uh, to Dr. Judy. Uh, so that we can make sure that the qualifications are right and then probably want to spend a little extra time with that person, making sure that that person uh, is, becomes familiarized with the BGU process. Because, you know, we've got a few unique uh, factors in our dissertation process with our, old, our transformational uh, aspect. And so I want to make sure that a supervisor understands that process from, from our perspective. So. Anyway, work on that. Just look at the website, see if there's any BGU professors that you really would like to relate to. Uh, you know, saying if not, if there's another person out there, that's fine. Just let me know, and we can uh, we can work with that person to uh, help them uh, come along in the BGU process. All right. Oh my! It looks like we just lost Marine. Uh, Noel. You're an audience of one. <laughs> but we are going to record this session. Uh, if Maureen is not able to get in, uh, that we, she will be able to look at that. And if Ryan, for some reason, doesn't make it today, uh, we'll have to have him uh, review this session also. Well, I do think we need to get started, uh, I, I guess, because uh, I want to honor your time. So I think Dr. Henry is going to lead us through a PowerPoint presentation on the literature review, and then we can talk a little bit about that along the way. So Dr. Henry, if you can uh, find that presentation and share the screen, we can uh, start moving forward with that. Okay, I'll find the presentation first. Um, are you hearing me? Yes, we're hearing you fine. So I'm going to find it and then I'm going to share my screen. Okay, good. <clears throat> Have to become accustomed to the darkness. It gets dark earlier now, of course. So <laughs> I have to always change my whole thinking. 
when we get to this time of year. <laughs> Okay. Okay. Can you see um, my screen now? Yes, we're seeing that fine. Okay. Actually, I have two um, PowerPoints. Okay. That cover the literature review, and the one I've chosen to share with you is much. Uh, lengthier, but it's much more comprehensive. And for that, I have decided to share that with you. Um, there are 47 frames. I am going to put it up into the course, but there are some sections that I may just go over very quickly. But this is very thorough and very, um, and will be very useful. Good. Um, as I reflected on the literature review, um, what, there's several um, implications that I would like to remind us of in terms of the review of the literature. One, um, we, we've started out with identifying the problem, with a statement of the problem, with the questions of the study, etc. And, and that process should have been based on our preliminary, and I emphasize the word preliminary, um, reading of the literature. Um, research is a dynamic process. So what happens as you continue to delve into the literature, you may find that you have to go back to your chapter one and make some changes. And I'm saying that to, to um, let you know that so that you don't feel frustrated by the process because um, the literature research is good research is grounded on a thorough knowledge of the research literature. No, that I hesitate when I said a thorough knowledge because believe you me, there is so much written about everything. When you start to look at the literature on any particular topic, you are going to start out seeing thousands of, and I'm talking about research articles, journal articles. So you have to ask yourself the question, how in the world am I going to, to read all of these articles and become familiar enough with the topic to really say, this is where I stand. Um, nevertheless, it is a process and you will learn to, how to do it. Now, there are several things that happen when you look at the literature to help to clue you in to, as to which research is important. You find that the, 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 the important research in whatever area you're looking at, you're going to find it being mentioned again and again by researchers. So that is a clue that that piece of research is something you need to look at because it's foundational to the field. That's one of the ways in which you try to narrow the reading and try to capture that which is most important, as it were. The other piece that, um, because we're from different parts of the world that I really um, encourage students to do, is to find literature that addresses the situation within your context. That is very important. Now, when we look at it that way, we are going to find, fortunately or unfortunately, that most research is done in the Western world. And for that reason, it becomes even more important that you pay attention to the research that has been done in your context. And um, usually you start out thinking, well, there's not much in my context. But um, I think of the uh, review of literature and the literature search like a hunt. And so you have to keep looking and looking and looking. If, if you start out empty, don't say, well, there's nothing written on the topic in my context. What it does say is, however, that you have to really search. 
and there is where the librarian is there to help you to search for research literature within your context. So I want to begin with those observations. Um, okay, let me um, share this PowerPoint. As I said, it's 47 frames. I am going to put it up in the course, but I'm going to um, want to emphasize um, certain frames because it's so important. It's a very thorough um, presentation. So we we'll start from the beginning. A literature review discusses published information in a particular subject area, emphasis being on the word published, because we're looking for um, peer-reviewed research in a particular subject area. And um, that and within a certain time period, we're going to talk more about time later. A literature review can be just a simple summary of the sources, but it usually has an organizational pattern and combines both summary and synthesis. And the, the, the phrase that I want us to pay attention to here is organizational pattern. Um, you are responsible for reporting the literature in some kind of form and pattern and it's up to you to make to make that choice but there are guidelines on how you um, identify your pattern it is a summary of the important information of the source but as it is as um it's a, a recap it is a synthesis a reorganization or a reshuffling of that information it might give a new interpretation of old material or combine new with old interpretations, or it might trace the intellectual progression of the field, including major debates. And depending on the situation, the literature review may evaluate the sources and advise the reader on the most pertinent or relevant. Um, one of the um, requirements in a good research literature review is that you're not just going to describe what you found in the literature you have to be able to evaluate and you have to be able to make comparison across the literature that's very important so it's not an annotated bibliography it's a review and it is a dialogue between the materials that you have read the format of, of a literature review may vary from discipline to discipline, from assignment to assignment. In our context, because we, you are doing a doctoral um, research project, there is a particular format that we expect your literature review to take. Um, generally, the purpose of the review is to analyze critically, and that's another phrase that is important. Analyze critically a segment of the published body of knowledge through summary classification and comparison of prior research studies. You see, the, the, the review of literature is where you're going to ground your research. And to put it simply, what I say is, in doing the review of literature as a researcher, you are saying, this is what other researchers have studied and found. So you, you are situating your research in a body of work that is already out there. And then you're carving out for yourself your own niche. So this is what researchers have studied, this is what they have found. And as a result, of my understanding of the field, this is what I would like to study. That's the kind of um, approach that you are going to take as you study the literature. So therefore, um, you cannot ignore the literature, even if the literature doesn't fit your preconceived assumptions about the study, you cannot ignore a particular piece of literature or a particular body of literature because it doesn't fit what you expect the literature to show. 
what you need to be able to do is to look at the literature objectively and be able to see where you fit. And if the literature, as a result of your study of the literature, you start to see weaknesses in your proposed study, then you need to go back to your chapter one and make the necessary changes. So what I'm saying is that the literature review represents a dynamic piece. So you want to be careful that you don't just look for literature to support your assumptions or your beliefs. You want to look at the literature as objectively as possible and let the literature speak to you. That, that is important. So it's a it's a effective evaluation of selected documents on a research topic. A review may form an essential part of the research process, or it may constitute a research project in itself. Um, for us doing the doctoral research, it is an essential part of the research process. Okay. And this last point is important. Like I said, you already started out in chapter one identifying questions of the study, questions you want to address. However, the review of literature also leads logically to research questions. So that is another reason why you must be prepared to having done the review of literature, go back to your chapter one and see if your questions really uh, match what has been addressed. You have to be prepared to do that, okay? Um, one of the things I have said to students in other contexts is um, one of the ways I, I suggest that people read research articles, and I know I, in the um, info section, I think I've put in there a short document on how to re read a research article. And, um, the first thing we have to know about reading research is that you don't read it all at one sitting from page one to page 22. You read it by sections. So you read the abstract, you read the introduction, and you want to read the research questions, the assumptions, the research questions, and if it's a quantitative research, you want to read the hypotheses. You want to start with those because then though that information gives you an idea of whether or not this piece of research literature is really what you want to read. Now, in looking at the um, research questions, you may find yourself wanting to ask the same questions and that is, um, that is acceptable because your context is going to be different, most likely is going to be different to the context in which that research was done. So even though you may ask the same questions, that in no way invalidates the importance of the study you're going to be doing because your context is different. Does that make sense to you? I could stop for you to ask questions or make observations. Does that make sense to you? Okay. What is a literature review? And this, this slide is important. What is a good literature review? And what is a poor literature review? It is a sy synthesis of available research. It is a critical evaluation. It has appropriate breadth and depth. It has clarity and conciseness. It uses rigor and consistent methods. That is a good literature review because um, the first thing there, synthesis, that's important. And because it's a synthesis, it is not an annotated bibliography. You don't just read one article and decide to write. You read the articles and you compare them. Are, are there similarities in terms of methods? Are there similarities in terms of their findings? Are there similarities in terms of context? Are there differences? Why? 
Um, are there gaps in the report? Um, who is the author? What is the strength of the author of the research, etc.? So the synthesis piece is very important because you're looking at the literature as a whole in order to um, use it for your research, proposed research. So a poor literature review is an annotated bibliography. It's confined to description. A literature review is not a description of the literature. It is an evaluation, a critical evaluation of the literature. It is not narrow and shallow. It's not confusing and long-winded. And it's not certainly not constructed in an arbitrary way. Are we going to talk more about that? That is why the focus and the subtopics that you um, use to report the literature is important. Um, we write a literature review to provide you with a handy guide to a particular topic. And they also provide a solid background, and this is important, for a research paper's investigation. So the literature review is your way of saying, this topic that I am going to study is a valid one. It is an important piece of study because others have taken the time to study it. However, I believe I have a contribution to make to the issue. So this is what I am going to be doing, but I am building, and that this piece is important, I am building on what other researchers have done. So you are not um, creating something new. I always like to say to students, usually at the beginning of a class, people say, well, you know, I'm not finding any literature on this topic. And I always say, Oh, yes, there's a whole lot more than what you think there is out there. It, so at the beginning, it might be slow, but as you keep searching and looking, you are going to find that there's way more studies of that topic, whatever that topic it is you may think of, than you originally thought about. Okay. Um, the literature review is written for professionals and for scholars because we want to look at the depth and the breadth of the literature. It emphasizes the credibility of the writer in his or her, 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 her own field. In other words, what you're saying as a result of the literature review is that I know the topic. I'm aware of it. I have studied it. And this is my contribution. It's for you to take a critical look. Again, that word critical, critical look. It is not a shopping list. And it also demonstrates the relevance of the research that you are going to be doing. Now, the literature um, can include books, journal articles, etc. Let me just stop here and say that in the context in which we are doing the literature review, the focus is on peer-reviewed journal articles. That is the focus. Peer-reviewed journal articles. Um, that is our central focus. It doesn't mean that you couldn't use some other literature, but the bulk of the literature you want to review must be peer-reviewed because you are placing your study in the context of research that has already been done. Now, in terms of an um, peer-reviewed refers both to quantitative and qualitative studies, because in, in peer-reviewed journals, they report both quantitative and qualitative studies. So I just wanted to make that clear. It doesn't mean that you're not going to look at reports, etc., especially if you want to situate your study in terms of certain statistics. So yes, you would look at reports, et cetera, depending on the topic. The literature review provides a background to the study that you're proposing to do. 
the background may consider one or more of the following aspects. Um, we've talked about theoretical framework, theoretical background, uh, clinical practice is here because this um, presentation was in the context of medicine, um, methodology or research methods, previous findings, the rationale or the relevance of the current study. So when we do the review of literature, we are um, looking at these issues. What is the theoretical framework? What is the theoretical background underlying this issue? What methods, what research methods have other writers used to study this issue? What are their previous findings? What rationale have they proposed and what is the relevance of what they have done to this study that I propose to do? Okay, I'll just skip some of these. Why write a literature review? Um, place each work in the context of its contribution to the understanding of the, of the subject under review. Describe the relationship of each work to the others under consideration. Identify new ways to interpret and shed light on any gaps in previous research. Resolve conflicts among seemingly contradictory previous studies. Identify areas of prior scholarship to prevent duplication of effort. Point the way forward for further research. And then place one's work in the context of existing literature. So a good uh, literature review will do all of these things. Any questions, comments? I'm aware that this is a lot of information, but like I said, the, the presentation is going to be in the course so you could look it over and review it. Um, what should you do before writing the review of literature? And this is what some of this you have done in your chapter one, in your draft chapter one. If your assignment is not very specific, you need to seek clarification from your supervisor or lecturer. Um, I, um, Dr. Payne has mentioned the number of sources that we should have um, for the proposal. I think it's 20 sources. Am I right, Dr. Payne? Yes. And then for the actual um, study, um, Correct me if I'm not right. It should be about 35, at yes. least 35. Yeah, and, and those are minimal. Yes, that's what I'm saying. saying. And I was about to say that it, that's quite minimal when mm -hmm. you think of the thousands of uh, journal articles on your one topic, right? I want to um, make just one, maybe one comment. I mean, as you're, especially if you're using, you know, we've looked at two databases, Google, Google Scholar and ProQuest, they will give you a summary of, of you know, the article. And the, the challenge, as Dr. Henry has also said, is trying to, uh, what's the word we want to use? To, to get through a mound of research articles and trying to determine those particular research articles that will be very uh, you know, relevant to what you're trying to do. And mm -hmm. so that will be the challenge. You know, it's not usually a matter of not finding enough <laughs> uh, literature, it's usually how to narrow the field to a, and I'll just use the term, a representative uh, group of literature uh, that yes. seems to uh, give a flavor for what is going on in your particular field. So again, you know, if we look at teen pregnancy, there's thousands and thousands and thousands of uh, research articles that we'd be able to find on that. Sure. But, uh, and as Dr. Henry said, at times, as you even look at the summaries, you're going to see some themes that keep uh, being repeated over and over. And so you're looking just for some representative literature that will, uh, you know, help, help a person, the reader, see that you know, this is representative of some of the thinking in relationship to uh, teen pregnancy. Yes, thank you. Um, the other thing I want to mention, too, is that... Um, 
even where we've identified the minimum number of research articles that you need to address and use in your study, you are going to end up reading more than that. Because it is a, the, the, the review of literature is a selective process. So you're going to find yourself reading articles that you don't actually use. Please bear that in mind. Um, okay. Let me make one other, one other comment when we're talking sure. about sources. You know, in an APA reference list, you only list sources that you have actually cited within yes. uh, your dissertation. Sometimes a person can also include a sources consulted uh, list, which and I've seen that in, in, in several different uh, kinds of dissertations, and then that's acceptable at BGU. Let's say if you're in the Turabian uh, mode writing, a Turabian bibliography includes both works cited and works consulted. So that's one of the uh, a bit of the latitude that the Turabian style allows. But since we are really focusing mainly on an APA as much as possible, you may have a uh, you may have a works consulted list if you think there are some works that you didn't actually uh, cite, but you think they are very helpful for a reader to understand that they're out there and they're worth uh, worth investigation. Okay. Um, I'll skip over this. The one of the things you the the review of literature should help you to do is to narrow your topic and um and just um applying this to what i've seen so far in terms of what you propose to, to do um for all three of you right now your topics are pretty broad there's going to you're going to need to do a, 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 a narrowing if you're going to do a research that is manageable and that I know is usually a stressful piece in the foundational process because um, we usually like to think of research as a funnel. The top is very broad and you're going down. The, re the, the focus of research tends to be very narrow given the breadth of what we conceive out there. But because of the nature of research, you need to have to narrow it down in order to make um, the, the valid findings that you need. So that you are going to start off very broad, but in this foundational process, we have to help you to narrow down your work. And um, I, may, I may also uh, let you know that after you have done the first draft of the proposal with us and you are working with a supervisor directly, it may be that the supervisor in looking at your work recommends that you do further narrowing. That's the nature of the process. So I share that with you so that you do not become unnecessarily frustrated with the process. It's not a straight line. And doing research is not like writing a major paper for a course. It is a totally different process, as I, I think you have begun to see, in terms of its demands and the effort that you have to put in it. This piece is an important piece. Um, the how current are your sources? Um, I will let Bill speak to the BGU um, standard, but um, what I do know in other schools that um, I am related with, um, we usually say you should avoid using material that is 10 years is old especially in certain fields, like in the field of science, in the field of medicine, there is so much change, etc. 10 years is very old. Um, but in every um, field, there are classic works. Classic works 
back in 1930, as far back as 1920, there's, there are classic works that um, scholars recognize that you may use, but you want to make sure that your sources are up to date in terms of freshness. Um, Dr. Payne? Yeah, let me just make one statement in that regard. Uh, it really, of course, it also depends on, you know, the context that you're writing in. If you're working on, say, you're trying to give us some community statistics about, let's use teen pregnancy since you're with us, Noel, and say you're going to tell us, you know, the statistics from 2010 in Guyana, that really is going to be totally outdated, right? So if statistical information, we definitely need to make sure that we are looking for uh, within the last year or two uh, of when you're writing that dissertation. Uh, yeah, like, like Dr. Henry has said, there is some classical in, uh, writings that, say we're do, working with some uh, uh, writings in regards to uh, biblical exegesis, and taking some principles. Of course, some of those kinds of concepts, uh, there are classical things that re, in regards to uh, certain biblical passages that you know, the dating isn't going to be quite as critical. But when you are trying to support uh, your arguments with statistics, or at least from especially uh, the kind of work that we're doing, you're going to have to make sure that those, those statistics are within the last year or two. Thank you. Okay. Find a focus. That's so important. And um, chapter one is one of the ways in which we focus but um the literature review that you're going to bring to the study yes when you start initially you're going to see um literature in all over the place but as you read you have to come to a focus point so that when you start to look at the literature, you have a clear focus as to where you expect that to take you into the proposed research that you are going to do. What should I do before writing the review of literature? Read widely. I've already suggested that. Um, when you read the literature, do they present one or different solutions? Is there an aspect of the field that is missing? How well do they present the material and do they portray it according to an appropriate theory? Do, is there a trend in the field? Is there a raging debate? Uh, pick one of these themes to focus the organization of your review. Um, Noel's area is wide and big and deep and broad, teenage pregnancy. There is um, such a volume of work in that area. And I'm going to mention some of it from a theoretical um, framework later. Um, before you do the literature review, start with some working thesis statement. And that's what we've done in chapter one, statement of the problem. That's your working thesis that guides you in terms of finding the literature. That's very important. So you don't just move into the literature blind. You have to have a focus that takes you into looking at the literature. And here she gives us some sample thesis statements. We're now going to look at that. Um, then you have to consider organizing the literature. Um, you've gotten a focus. You've narrowed it down to a thesis statement, statement of the problem. What is the most effective way of presenting the information? What are the most important topics, subtopics, and if in what order should you present them? Um, that is something that you will work out as you 
look at the literature. Um, I'm going to move ahead of this section. It's talking about what you should do before writing the review, the literature review, and it recommends that you start with an introduction, then there's a body, and then there's conclusion and recommendations. I would suggest that the introductory statement in your chapter to the review of the literature is a it should be a restatement of the problem that you're going to study so that you remind the reader that there's a focus, the problem that you're going to study, and you use that focus to um, break it down into subsections, which would be the body. Now, um, I thought I, I looked at the um, work that each of you proposed to do, for example, Maureen in entrepreneurship, Noel, teenage pregnant, looking at company values and company em um, employee and client values. And I thought about that in terms of um, the variables. We've talked earlier about variables. That's one way to help you narrow down um, how you're going to report the literature. Um, for example, with Noel's uh, look at teenage pregnancy, um, there are a number of theories that are used to explain teenage pregnancy. And I, I, the word, I start with the word explain. That's one aspect of teenage pregnancy. However, um, in order to address the issue of teenage pregnancy, you need to do more than explain it. Um, you need to be able to propose solutions to teenage pregnancy. And what we find is that there are a number of programs, um, we call them uh, adolescent pregnancy prevention programs that have been developed um, to be used uh, in different contexts. Now what you're going to find is that these programs themselves are built on certain theories. And um, some of the theories include uh, change theory and social cognitive uh, theory and health belief, um, the health belief theory. So what I'm saying there by, by way of example, you start to see how when you go into the literature, how you need to search and look for relevant literature. And one of the... Um, searches that you want to, to address is the whole issue of the theoretical framework that underlies or underpins whatever study you are proposing to do. You really want to become familiar with the underlying theories that explain, predict, um, that may be used to design programs to address your study. That's important. So that theoretical framework piece is central to the review of literature. That piece, you have to know it like the back of your hand, as it were. What are the theories? What are the theoretical frameworks that undergird your proposed study? Um, I'll, I'll move along from there. Organizing the body of the, the review of the literature. Um, for example, you may look at the literature uh, chronologically. If you want to look at it historically, um, from a historical perspective, again, looking at, and Noel isn't here to benefit from, but he will uh, look at the, the recording, looking at teenage pregnancy in the context of Guyana, um, you may want to look at a certain time period. What has been um, the incidence of teenage 
pregnancy in the last 20 years. That may be one way to, to, to manage the, the issue. Um, what has been happening in the society? What changes, what trends are noticeable in the society that may contribute to our understanding of the incidence of teenage pregnancy? Um, in terms of entrepreneurship um, that Maureen proposes to do, her focus is going to be particularly on Christian women as entrepreneurs in the Jamaican context. Again, she might want to look at it from a chronological perspective. Uh, what, what are some significant changes, if any, of women uh, becoming entrepreneurs within the last 20, 25 years in Jamaica? Are there any significant changes within the last 10 years? That may be one way to look at the issue. Um, you may look at trends. Whatever topic you're looking at, you may look at trends. Uh, trends in teenage pregnancy, uh, trends in terms of, for example, is there some relationship between gender, race, and schooling that explains teenage pregnancy? If so, what is the relationship? Uh, what, what, are, what, are, is, what statistics are showing about teenagers who get pregnant? How many of them, well, most of them do drop out from school, but in some um, places, there are re-entry programs for teenagers so that they could return to school and complete their education. Is that happening? How is that happening? Is that making a difference? Et cetera, et cetera. Um, if you were to look at it um, using trends. I'll stop here for any questions. Comments? You know, I, I, Maureen, I have unmuted your mic. Sometimes I've had to mute because we're getting, we're getting some noise. But if you, if you want to jump in with any questions, feel free to do that. Um, Dr. Payne, I'm having just a difficulty staying connected. <laughs> ah, okay. sorry. Uh, okay. I'm, I'm missing a lot of stuff. Are you? Just like trying to, um, to, to listen and take notes. Okay, okay, but I'm going to have it in, the, in the, um, the, the recording so that you could go over it. Right. Yes, and I will do that. I will go it over. But I still like to, I don't like to be missing anything. Uh, yes. Yeah, you will be able to see all the PowerPoints on the recording, so that will be helpful. Mm -hmm. Yes, and the PowerPoint will be placed, the full PowerPoint will be placed in the um, course. Right. Yeah. Well, um, one of the things I, I was having, just thinking, um, go ahead, Noel, you want to jump yeah. in? Yes, um, I've missed a few points too, so I got to wait until I get the the um, tape again then to look at it. But as um, Dr. Clear goes um, go on, I am, I am, a whole lot of confusion is going round and round and um, I mean, we were told that this is going to happen, mm -hmm. but um, it's actually real. It's it's real, you know, that these, and I have to maybe sort it out. As I said earlier, I need for someone that I can talk to is at where I am so that they can, together we can work it out. Mm -hmm. And uh, I think that is the problem I'm having, um, as I made mention somewhere, that I'm like a, like a solo person, because many of the persons that I started out to help, um, I'm not getting the type of, of response. And so it's a case where, um, you know, you don't talk about it, so you don't know if you're slipping or if you're making whatever until it gets to your end when you would have seen it. But I, I think that um, this is making a whole lot of sense. And um, I will have to go over it. And um, the timelines are so short to do all of this and to do all of what I'm doing at the same time. But I think 
in charge and he will he will help yeah right. um to, to <coughs> not necessarily answer but to um follow up on what you just said about finding other people who share this interest i think that's what you're saying finding people mm, who share yeah. your interest in yes, yes. Uh, somebody to read it yes studying teenage pregnancy um mm. my sense is that um there are probably more people who are interested in this than you think of um what about um governmental agencies are there within the ministry of education or within the ministry of health are there um agencies or sub subgroups that are paying attention to the issue of teenage pregnancy i would want to suggest that you check that um there's also i think the well i'm trying to remember from a long time ago is there a ministry of social welfare um or that addresses social welfare issues in the country i'm thinking that such a department may have an interest in um teenage pregnancy and the outcomes of teenage pregnancy so i just would suggest that we haven't heard from ryan Ryan, is this making sense to you, or are you as confused as Noel? Uh, highly confused. <laughs> you are. <laughs> Welcome I, to the world. I, I feel like it's, it's overwhel I'm overwhelmingly lost. Uh, could you help me with how I would condense my topic? Because my topic seems to be kind of straightforward. So I don't know how it. Could you explain that further? I actually, I have two okay. questions. That's the first. I'd be happy to do that. Um, because I was looking at your topic um, in terms of example, in terms of the review of literature. Um, I did look at your draft and make some comments. But here is what I'm seeing. I'm hearing you say that you want to study. And I, I use one of your questions. Uh, you said, what is the relationship between the values of the company, the values of its employees, and the values of the clients? Do you remember that question? Yes. Right. And then um, somewhere down the line, you mentioned these two things. You mentioned customer service and customer satisfaction. Right. Okay. And um, I think here I quote you, it says, focusing on the impact of the relationship on customer and employee satisfaction. Correct. Okay, now here, here is what I want to, to explain to you the, about the breadth of what you're proposing to do. You have several variables here. You have the issue of values. That's a variable. The values, the company values, the employee values, client values. Mm -hmm. And then you have customer service. That's another variable. And then you have customer satisfaction. That's a third variable. Those are three variables. Now, it is possible for you to do a study to show the, the relationship between these three variables. But let me tell you, these are broad. And for each of these, there are tons of studies. Yeah. And there's, there's so many studies on customer sat satisfaction just customer satisfaction then there's a series of studies on customer service and then now you have the issue of values so your challenge i'm proposing to you your challenge is to decide which of these variables you want to focus on because i'm saying to you that not that it's impossible i know you want to graduate and you have your life to live and you have other things you want to do with your life but to try to do a study that pulls together these three variables that is going to be big yes so i but so i was i agree that those are the variables i would say i would say though they 
those three things are components to the larger issue of my thinking, which is that um, that when the relationship is between the client and the employees is so basically strong that and there, there are shared values and there's customer satisfaction, there's comfort, whatever. But the main thing is that the relationship is will move from and create create profit instead of being a profit based, you know, you know, all we want is profit, all we want is profit, all we want is profit. That you know, we have to focus on the customer, we have to focus on the employee, and we have to focus on our values to build a symbiotic relationship to get the profit. Okay. Maybe, Shall I confuse you a little bit more? You have Please just don't. put in two, <laughs> You have just put in two more variables. Creating profit and the symbiotic relationship. So the symbiotic relationship is my main focus. It's That's okay. Here's what here's what I want to propose that you do. Go to the research literature and find two or three articles, research articles that address what you describe as the symbiotic relationship okay. in a business organization. Okay, I found them. Do that. Find two or three of these articles. Then okay. when you read them, here's what I ask you to look at, especially when you read them. Look at the problem statement. Look at the um, questions of the study. Look at the method of the study. Okay. Right? Look at those. Because what I'm um, working to get you to do is to focus on something that is manageable, a manageable study. Okay? Okay. Does that make sense? That makes sense. It kind of means that everything else is pushed to, us, to the side. Yeah, and, and that's the other thing. What happens when we think research and when we start out thinking, we kind of hold on to everything. We want to do everything. And then the hardest thing is to let go of some pieces and say, well, okay, no, I can't do this now. This is what I need to do. So that's what I'm trying. Well, every one of you have to do that. But that's, that's the piece that you have to be able to do. You, you no. always start off broad and, and you're passionate about this big study that you want to do. But the reality is that in order to get it done, you are going to have to narrow your focus. Now, can you use, com can I use components of those other variables as part of it? Explain to me what you mean by components of the meaning, other variables. Meaning that, uh, in order to have a symbiotic relationship, you have, there has to be customer satisfaction. There has to be employee satisfaction. Is to be well in my thinking and, and you know my confusion that you can't have the symbiotic relationship unless your customers are happy and unless your employees are happy. Okay, let me suggest when you read the research literature, see how they define symbiotic relationship okay see how the research defines symbiotic relationship okay yeah you want to do that because remember and this is for everybody whatever you're doing you're building on what is there so um and and it's important the the definition of your key variables and terms you don't make those up you use what the literature already has because when well, i know our focus is on the qualitative study but with a quantitative study the other thing about your variables is that where the quantitative study is measuring these variables so that you have to define the variables in a way that they could be measured but with a qualitative study, after you've done your interviews and you've uh, done your focus group, et cetera, you end up, you may end up with, after you've done a qualitative study, defining the variable 
as a result of the findings from your qualitative study. So in the quantitative study, you begin with the definition of the variable. With a qualitative study, you end up with the definition of the variable. Mm. Let me ask you a question, Ryan. This is Bill. Mm -hmm. uh, Probably the term symbiotic, and I'd, I'd have to read the literature a little more. I think just that term itself, I've probably had a little bit of misunderstanding of how you're using that. I mean, for me, a symbiotic relationship between two organisms means that each organism is, is gaining something from the relationship, right? I mean, Correct. That, that would be a, a scientific understanding of the term symbiotic. So if we start applying that to, say, customer-company relationships, I can understand, okay, I can understand in terms of values. We, the, the customer and the, and the company need to have some common values that they both agree upon. Okay, that's at the value level. If we move to the term symbiotic, it means, at least if we just use the term in its technical uh, form, the company is contributing something to the customer and the customer is contributing something back to the uh, back to the company now we can say you know one part of that is just yeah the money the, the fee whatever whatever the customer is paying back okay that that's that's one component in the symbiotic relationship but obviously at least when I hear you talking you are seeking to identify some other factors and I'll go from the from the customer point of view that that customer is contributing back to the company. So I'd need to hear you talk about that, think about that a little bit but for me to understand what that really means for a customer to be able to be giving back to that company in terms other than the fee that 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 customer is paying. Uh, the main thing I would say is that the customer is giving back loyalty that will survive that will survive the company making mistakes and uh, uh, or huge even some you know huge mistakes that where most customers who don't have the symbiotic relationship will leave and go find another company where this customer will say you know what we're going to work through that because we are um, mutually connected and we are you know giving and take on both ends and that so our relationship is going to survive the thing so the, the whatever. And so the main thing I think that I want to show is that symbiotic relationship from the customer and from the employee uh, point of view is that they will get loyalty, give loyalty back to the company, but the, the company is going to actually give more to each than they receive. Mm. Okay. So we've, we're identif okay, we've identified two, two components that say a customer could give back to the company. Uh, there's just the remuneration. That's number one. Mm -hmm. Number two, you've mentioned loyalty. Okay, so that you know, so that 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 could be another component. If if the symbiotic relationship is functioning the way it should, then uh, some of the things that are going to happen are loyalty. You know, loyalty. If you want to turn into variables, you know, loyalty is a dependent variable on the symbiotic relationship. Right. And of course, it goes vice versa. The, the, the loyalty could also be, the symbiotic relationship could be determined by the loyalty. I probably wouldn't say it that way. I'd probably say if there's an actual symbiotic relationship, there's this trust relationship, one of the results, one of the dependent variables is loyalty, right? Correct. You see some loyalty develop because this symbiotic relationship is in place. So right. you're talking of using term variable, uh, you know, the, a dependent variable is loyalty, which is dependent on something going on in that symbiotic relationship, right? Okay, right. Okay. So, and, you just, and, you again, just, you know, we just, we we're trying to use terminology, you know, variables, it's just something that's dependent on something else. And you just you brought know, in they, trust. Yeah, and trust, okay, a yeah, trust. Okay. So, <laughs> so now it's expanding out again. <laughs> that's all right. Those are all dependent variables that are growing out of that symbiotic relationship. Relationship, yes. Okay. If we see some of those, if we see some of those traits that are obvious in the customer that we're looking at, mm -hmm. we can then uh, conclude that there seems to be a symbiotic relationship happening here based on some of these factors, some of this evidence that you're seeing uh, manifested, demonstrated. 
within a particular situation. I would suggest you need to think of maybe at least one or two companies that you think illustrate a symbiotic relationship. You could even do part of your, your dissertation, some of the research can be done in terms of a case study. You're looking at a particular company and its customer uh, relationship, and you're going to analyze that in terms of the symbiotic relationship, what's going on from the company's perspective, what's going on from the customer's perspective that's contributing to that symbiotic relationship. So, you, you know, you would probably want to think about a case study that you're going to actually really go in depth on. Uh, mm. You know, and, so that, that would be my suggestion. Okay. But if you don't, I mean, you know, there's thousands and thousands and thousands of companies. To right. me, you're going to have to focus on at least one or two or three companies that you really think illustrate the kind of relationship you're talking about and then analyze that because it's out of that you're going to begin to make some, draw some conclusions based on interviewing, you know, researching the company, their history. Uh, you may are talking to employees, talking to leaders, talking to customers. You're going to gather data by talking and interviewing people within that company or companies that you're doing a case study on. That, that would be my, my, my way to approach this. And Dr. Henry may have some other thoughts on that. Um, not really. I agree with what, with what you have just um, suggested to Ryan. I think the good news for you, Ryan, is that you have a very interesting and powerful topic. The bad news is that you have to narrow it down. Right. <laughs> so you yes. have good and bad news. But it is a do it's doable. It's doable. And I like Dr. Payne's um, recommendation that you probably take a case study approach and you look at one or two companies um, my inclination would be to just look at one company right. and a, a company that would allow you to do such a study because this would be a sensitive study to a company. It yes. be, because it may be that you start out assuming that there's a symbiotic relationship and then when you actually do the, the symbiotic quote unquote that you know that's why I say go to the literature and see how the literature, what term the literature uses and how they define what you now call a symbiotic relationship. But it may be that you, from the outside, you look at this company and based on their balance sheet, you assume that they do have this symbiotic relationship. But when you actually do the study, you do the focus group, you do the interviews, etc it may turn out that there's something else. Right. Can I do, because I was thinking about that, doing a case study. I was wondering if it's possible to do a, to do a case study where a company failed, what, to do two companies, where one is positively reaffirming the symbiotic relationship where, where one failed. And I do have a company in mind who failed, uh, failed their customers in a huge way. Um, and I actually had access to this company too because of my wife. Um, works there. So, is that possible? I don't know if you can hear me. There's a um, shall I say all things are possible, but again, that is a sensitive study. Mm. And the question would be, will the company allow you to do the study? That's a very big piece. Mm. That would if, be a sensitive study. And if they allow you to do the study, will the employees or et, et cetera be transparent enough and open enough and honest enough <laughs> to really, uh, you know, admit to things? Like I said, yes. the, the company that you're using is the positive symbiotic relationship. They're, of course, going to be more. That's, that's good for their, that's their, PR, right, their image. Right. The other company, you're going to have real trouble, I would think. I'm not sure how you approach that. But if you can approach that in some confidential way, yeah, that would be great. Well, well, the good news is that their business has been in the news for the last couple of years. So it's not a secret. So everybody knows that they failed right. in, okay. in customer relations. Yeah, if you were able to get two companies and compare them, I think that would be great. That would be an excellent study. Mm -hmm. What I'm looking at, too, and you'd have to think where this is going, you know, in terms of the transformational study, I think it would be great after you've done that sort of study of, say, one or two companies, 
that you then are able to create some kind of an assessment tool that a company could use to kind of be a barometer, a measuring uh, uh, tool for them to be assessing their own a company in terms of the symbiotic relationship. I think that would be an excellent transformational product mm -hmm. to eventually uh, arrive at by doing this sort of a study. Okay. I'm sorry I took up some more time. No, that's okay. That's no, good. no, no. This is what our class has be has to be. Um, because this is not a kind of class that you can just do a lecture. We have to get you thinking and applying it to your study. Um, I'm going to close off with this last slide. As I said, this has 47 slides and I've emphasized them, but this is a good place to, to close off. It says, what should I do before writing the literature review? It says, similar to primary research, the development of the literature review requires four stage, stages. The problem formulation, the ser literature search, the data evaluation, and the analysis and interpretation. Now, the problem so, uh, formulation looks at the topic or field that you're going to examine. And that's the discussion we just had with you, Ryan, and we had with, um, with Noel. Then, now, having identified the topic or the field, then you do the literature search. And I've recommended seeing that one key term that I've heard you use over and over again is this symbiotic relationship it seemed to me that you need to get clarity on that term in the context of a business organization. What is a symbiotic relationship in the context of a business organization? So I'm recommending strongly that you find the research literature that addresses that. And so you search and find material. Then when you look at the literature, um, you are going to have some of your ideas expanded or narrowed, depending. But um, we've started out with a number of variables here. The, the, the values of the customers, values of employees, values of clients. Um, you could do one study that just looks at that. What is the relationship between the values of the customer the values of the clients and the values of the employees. And um, that's a question you may ask and then the study will answer that question. Or you may want to look at the issue of customer service and customer satisfaction. Is there a relationship between these two? customer service and customer satisfaction? And if so, what is that relationship? Um, is customer service the independent variable and customer satisfaction the dependent variable? And if that is so, then you might propose that very basic good customer service will result in positive or customer satisfaction. That, could, that would be a separate study by itself. Um, and then we've talked about loyalty. Just now you talked about loyalty. Or maybe you want to look at the relationship between customer service and customer satisfaction and propose that good customer service leads to positive customer satisfaction, which in turn will result in customer loyalty. So I've fleshed out two different studies, two different directions that you could go with your study. I yeah, hope I that helps. Okay. Okay, uh, yeah. Go ahead. I think, as, as Dr. Henry just mentioned, a, a key section of your literature review is defining the symbiotic relationship mm -hmm. to yep. company customers, et cetera. So, I mean, that would be a whole section in your literature review. Yes. You know, another section, since you're going to do a case study, could even be on the methodology of case study. I mean, yes. You could actually do a section as you read and 
learn some of the, uh, the, the best techniques, best practices in doing a case study uh, with a company, you know, that could be a section of your literature because you're, that, that's a part of your framework, your, your theoretical framework. Symbiotic relationship is a part of your framework. If you do a case study, just the methodology of a case study is a part of your framework. Uh, since at BGU, we do require that there be some kind of a biblical theological uh, part of that framework. And so that could be another section of your literature view. What biblical principles can you glean that, and then you'd look at writers that would contribute to this kind of a relationship that you are uh, seeking to ask, you know, ask about in terms of the companies and customers. Yes. So, yeah, I mean, those are just a few uh, possible uh, sections that you could maybe include in terms of a literature, literature review. Defining the, you know, the symbiotic relationship, uh, case study methodology, some biblical principles, uh, even how, how values are communicated uh, in a company. You know, there's a whole, you'll find all kinds of literature on values and how, you know, how, how companies uh, determine their values and how they communicate those values and how customers come to know those values. Uh, yes. Those are all, th th those could all be pieces of a literature review. Okay. Okay, so I think I'll stop here. And um, the, you will have the whole presentation to look at and to um, glean from it in terms of applying it to your respective studies. Yeah, I think that's good. I, we are kind of running out of time. But yeah, I, same thing. I would encourage you to each go back and look at your research questions and determine what you need to know from a three, theoretical perspective and that would give you a clue to the kind of topics that you need to include in your literature review. But just kind of with that in your mind, what is the theoretical information I need to know in order to do this, this project? And look at your research questions. You should, as you're looking at those research questions, there hopefully there'll be some concepts that jump out at you. Those are the concepts that you need to use to organize your literature review in terms of the various themes, topics that you would deal with in your literature review. Okay. All right, a lot of material I know to cover, and I think we will close it off tonight just because uh, the hour. Uh, we are asking that you, you can discuss, look at the discussion question, you're gonna kind of get into some of these issues there. And again, we're just, we're, we're working with each other, trying to you know, help each other uh, refine our, our thoughts, our topics, and so, you know, don't be afraid to just put things out there, try them out in the discussions. Same thing when you uh, give you, uh, you start writing your literature chapter for this week. Uh, don't be afraid to just try out some things. And so that's what you have to begin just by writing. I think, you know, doing, going to the databases, I would again recommend you go to Google Scholar or ProQuest. You can access either one of those, those through our uh, BGU library. Those will give you a good starting point. You just start entering some of these key words, uh, you know, symbiotic relationship, teen pregnancy, uh, cultural issues to teen pregnancy. Uh, you know, that cultural issues is a whole another big topic, especially for, I would think, Noel's and Marine's uh, studies. You know, the culture uh, where you're doing those studies, whether it's, you know, Jamaica, Guyana, there's some cultural factors there that's going to play, I think, a big factor in terms of your your theoretical framework, and it also then needs to be addressed within your literature review in some way. Um, and I would like to add to that in terms of um, addressing Noel's um, topic, that um, that Noel, you should look into the literature in terms of what are the theories that have that are used to explain uh, teenage pregnancy? What are the theories that are used to predict teenage pregnancy? And what are the theories that are used to develop programs to address uh, uh, teenage pregnancy prevention? 
what are the theories that are used to explain teenage pregnancy? What are the theories that are used to predict teenage pregnancy? And what are the theories that are used to develop a teenage pregnancy prevention program? I want to refer to Noel that he looks at the literature that covers those areas. Yeah, that's very good. And those the, the things that Dr. Henry just talked about, I was just looking at your project, they really relate to your research questions one and four, <laughs> because you're looking at the contributing factors in the first question. At the end, you're kind of looking at what kind of programs can be developed uh, to actually influence the uh, psychosocial behavior of teens. And so, yeah, those questions that Dr. Henry just put forth are excellent, I think. And you can relate those to, uh, you know, at least questions one and six on your particular research questions. Okay, good. All right. With okay. that, let's go ahead and close down shop and uh, we will continue to communicate uh, with you soon. Okay, Dr. Have Henry. A good evening. Yes, Maureen, sorry. I just wanted to just get the next two headings. You said problem formulation, literature search, what were the other two? You don't have to give me the details. Uh, in terms of the review of the literature, the four stages. Okay, we have it here in the in the um the frame. Problem formulation, literature search, data evaluation, and analysis and interpretation. Analysis of? No, analysis and interpretation. Okay, thank you. Okay, and that's where you look at the findings and conclusions of the pertinent literature. Right, and those are located on slide 29, Maureen. Yes, it's, it's all there the in the PowerPoint, but I'm glad that you're paying attention and mm -hmm. that you're finding it useful. Good. Right. Okay. Okay, well, we'll, up, we'll upload the PowerPoint to the site. I'll probably do that tomorrow, and then I'll actually upload this video presentation also, so that we'll have both those on the, uh, well, actually, yeah, the, the PowerPoint, I don't know if that'll be helpful or not, Dr. Henry, if you want to want to have them have that PowerPoint or have just look at the, uh, the video. No, I will upload the um, PowerPoint. Okay, good. That yes, would be helpful, I think, so they have that thorough. whole thing. It's very, very thorough. Yes, because we didn't go over all the slides, and I think it would be yes. helpful to be able to look at the whole PowerPoint. Oh, yes. Good. Yes, definitely. Right. I'll upload it. Okay. All right. Great. Okay. Okay. Well, with that, I think I'm going to say goodbye, and uh, we will uh, continue to have a good evening. Talk in our in our in our, in our, in our online session. sessions. Thank you. Right.